little different schedule today because of election day tomorrow. Um, we kind of did our Tuesday practice on Monday, and uh, the, the players will be off tomorrow, and then we'll get back at it Wednesday. Um, you know, we kind of wrapped up Saturday's game on Sunday. Looking forward to uh, to going out to Columbus and, and taking on a very, very good Ohio State team. So with that, we'll open up for questions. We'll take our first question from Chris Eisman, Gannett. Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, just, I guess, from reviewing the film from the other game, I mean, what was the biggest takeaways and the biggest improvement that you feel like you guys need to make going into uh, Saturday? Um, yeah, we're so young in the stage right now of building the program that we, we need to improve in every area. But we did some good things. That's what's encouraging. So, you know, we're going to build on the things we did well. We're certainly going to work on the things we didn't do so well. Um, but the best part that I enjoy is watching – how hard the guys play, how hard they work. The culture's growing by the day. And uh, as I told the team, we're running out of firsts. So we had our first win together, then we had our first loss together, we had our first Sunday after a win. Unfortunately, now we had our first Sunday after a loss. And those are tough things. You know, the, I think you guys get that they put so much into each and every game that literally, you know, you kind of mourn the loss and you got to get over it and you got to fight your way through it and it's not easy and, and there's the physical pain that they feel there's the lack of sleep there's all those things that can really have an effect on you but that's the beauty of of football is you know unless it's the last game of the year you got to get ready for the next one and uh i've always enjoyed that 32 years i've always thought that was a, a really cool part of my job we'll go to james cratch nj.com greg i if everything goes well, you're going to play nine Big Ten games in nine weeks. I know you've kind of compared this to the NFL. How much of a physical grind is it for a team to go through that? And have you done anything differently during the week, knowing that every week you're going to have you know a matchup against a Big Ten caliber team? Well, I think you're right that it is a grind. Um, one that I'm excited about. Like I think our players are really excited about. It's a you know it's a national game every week in this league. Um, I think Jay Butler, the job that he did from the day he got hired till now is really paying dividends. I mean, we look different. We're not where we want to be, but we, we really, uh, I think, are making strides. Um, we're doing a lot of things to try to keep the players healthy that we would have done if it was COVID or not. But um, I think they're helping us out, you know, using technology to the utmost. So I'm excited about um, the opportunity to play these games. And, you know, as you guys know, it's 2002, I started working on the Big Ten. I thought that's where Rutgers belonged. And, uh, man, it was it was a grind to in all those years of trying to position ourselves to get there and, you know, being very close at one point and then having it pulled out from underneath. Um, it's just really cool to be competing in this league. I think this is the best football conference in America. And uh, with the most history and the most tradition, and I love it. I, I get excited. Uh, I'm blessed to do this for a living. We we'll go to Bobby Darren, 24/7 Sports. Greg, early on, you didn't play a lot of true freshmen. Is is there a plan that to use more of those guys? And what kind of strategy are you taking with that? In, in what's really a unique season? Um, well, you, you know, with the new rule that you could use, you know, the old rule that you could use four games and still play them, right? Uh, and, and still keep their eligibility. That was good. And now this is a free year, really. So, um, But we're, we're truly in the phase of where we're building our program, and the best players will play as long as all things are equal off the field. And that's really how we approach it. And if you're a freshman, you're playing. And if you're not, well, that's, that's okay, too. Um, the one thing that I've said, and I'll say it again because I think it's important, and I really don't like – it turns me off when coaches who take over a job say, you know, when we get our guys here, it's gonna, we're going to really get this thing cranking. As I've told our team over and over, if you're still here, because there's a lot, several guys who decided this wasn't for them, but if, if they've put in the work and they're still part of this program, those are my guys, and we're here to win. We're going to do everything we can to help them win. Um, certainly I have my eye on the long, the long goal, that's for sure. 
but uh, these guys are paying a price. They deserve, really deserve everything we got, so that's what they're getting. Take our next question from Steve Politi, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, are there parallels between trying to catch a program like Ohio State now as it was when your first go around when Miami was that level of program? And, and just, I mean, what are the challenges of that, of just trying to, uh, having a, an historic power in your own division and trying to reach that level? Well, I think it gives you a great measuring stick, right? I mean, Ohio State's one of the best in the country, if not the best. Miami at the time was unparalleled. I mean, you're talking about a four-year period when they had 21 first-round draft picks. You know, we were talking about the old, what would it have been, the O2 game, you know, the other day. And there were, I think there's something like 16 or 15 or 16 first-round picks on that team alone that played in Rutgers Stadium that day. So, um, you know, that was an insane – hats off to Butch Davis. I mean, that that's an insane accumulation of talent. Uh, Ohio State certainly is is also has very talented roster. I don't know if there'll ever be a roster though. Twenty one first round picks in four years. I don't, I don't know if that'll ever be repeated. Our next question from Richie Schneider, right, with Rivals. Hey, Coach. So you recruited a lot of these players on this Ohio State team. What can you tell us about this Buckeyes team, and what kind of relationship do you have with Ryan Day? After I think you worked with him for two seasons. Well, uh, I, you know, I did, I was involved in, you know, everything is team recruiting these days. So to say one guy recruited him, that would be, that would be inappropriate. But I was involved in the recruitment of a lot of these players and they're really good players and, and equally as good people. I think, uh, you know, I look at, you know, what Urban did, not only for Ohio State, but I feel for the whole Big Ten. When he took that job in 2012, the Big Ten was not, was not doing what it's doing now. And, um, I give a lot of credit to Urban. I thought he did. He set the bar at a different level in recruiting in the Big Ten. And um, I think that continued on. And uh, I got to be a part of that for three years, three great years. Uh, enjoyed the time there. Great people, great friends. Uh, and Ryan's one of those friends. He's uh, Ryan's a stand-up guy. He's an excellent coach. I mean, I knew that. I actually knew it before he got there. But when, when Urban told me he was going to hire him, I said, man, that's going to be a great hire. And sure enough, I mean, you could tell the day he got there, he's a rising star. And uh, he's doing a tremendous job with the program, taking it over uh, from Urban and, and putting his own stamp on it. But uh, keeping, you know, I, I know a lot of the people there, you know, he, he kept a lot of things and he put his own stamp on it. And that's really what uh, I think what, what good coaches do. So uh, we're, we're close. He's an excellent football coach. He's, he and his family are great people. And, um, you know, when we go to compete, we compete. And otherwise... We're friends. Thanks, Coach. Bruce, Bruce Beck with NBC for our next question. I think you're muted, Bruce. Or Bruce. I think you're still muted, Bruce. You had it for a second. There you go. Hey, Greg, sorry about the amateur mistake. Um, daunting challenge this week, but at the same time, the opportunity to play in prime time, a nationally ranked opponent for your kids. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Well, I think it's a great experience. I think that um, that's what we aspire to. Right? So, uh, you know, it'll be a little different because it won't be 108,000 people. You know, it won't be the, the traditional gala of college football that, that happens in our conference, but it's still a tremendous opponent, and as you mentioned, it's it's in prime time and um, in talking to the pe you know the people here, we haven't had a ton of those, so look, that, that makes it special for our kids I think. Um, so I'm looking forward to competing. Our guys are, they work, you know, like I said they, they picked themselves up after a tough loss, dusted themselves off, and really worked hard today, and that, you know, as a coach that's what you look for. You know, how are they going to respond? And uh, there's choices there. You know, everybody says, well, they, they're going to go out. And, no, not necessarily. There's, there's another choice. That's the, yeah, I'm not going today. And, uh, you know, we had a tremendous, tremendous group uh, that went out and practiced today. And that was, that was really encouraging. We'll go to Keith Sargent with NJ.com for the next question. 
Hey, Greg, I wanted to ask you about Election Day. Um, I know you made a big point to uh, get everyone registered to vote. Um, have there been any challenges for everyone to actually indeed vote? Uh, what were those uh, discussions like? Well, I, I'm glad you asked the question, Keith, because that was a big part, you know, our chop for change. One thing that Amir Shaw, who's our director of player development, really worked hard to make sure everybody got registered to vote. And, and really, I think it's like 99% of our team has already cast their vote. So, um, you know, if there's one or two guys that still have to do it, I know there's some coaches that have to do it, um, but um, I think the, the players have pretty much done, done their part. And I think the education, even I, you know, I learned a lot. And I've, we've had different programs I've been at. We've talked about, you know, voting and the history of voting and all those things. But I, I learned a lot this time, you know, I've kind of voted for the big, you know, whether it's the president or the governor in, in states I've lived in. But I, I really didn't realize the importance of every vote and the education that our players received and, and quite honestly, the coaches received, um, I think helped make us a more educated voting group. So I think that was really a positive thing. And, um, you know, again, the chop for change is something that's very important to us. It's important to me, but equally it's important to our team and our coaching staff. And um, that's a continual movement. It's not a, it's not a uh, you know, do a couple things and then, and then call it a day. So this is all part of it. A question from Joey. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you vote, Frank? Did I what? Did you vote? No, I still I have my my um, ballot at the house. I'm going to either do it this afternoon or tomorrow. Thank you. Did you vote? Thank you. Yeah, you had to leave the closet, I imagine, to vote, right? I mean, that's what you know. You see. Our next question from Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Craig, just wanted to ask, um, how do you look back on your three years at Ohio State? Obviously, in, in 2016, uh, you guys make a playoff. 2018, um, the defense had, um, and, and that team kind of had some issues in terms of allowing points. But overall, what are you just looking back on your time at Columbus? How do you feel about your, your tenure there and everything um, you did? Well, I had a, we, had, we had a really good experience. Uh, my family, myself. I made some dear friends. You know, Urban was a good friend before, but uh, I met a lot of a lot of really fine people. You know, from Gene Smith, athletic director, to to you know Kerry Combs, who's a, a dear friend. And as I said earlier, Ryan Day, Mickey Marotti. There's so many guys. Luke Fickle. I only got to work with him for a year, but another stand-up guy. There's a lot of really good people that I had the chance to work with at uh, at Ohio State. That uh, they'll be lifelong friends. So I look at it as a great experience. A few more questions here. We'll go back to Chris Eisman with the Gannett. Greg, uh, just with Michael Duong for, I mean, what have you seen from him the last couple of games and, and the kind of the impact that he's had on the defensive line? Well, I think Mike's an explosive player and uh, one that we really, really needed inside. And, uh, you know, we, as you know, we play a lot of people, so we're going to keep rolling the defensive linemen. But I think Mike brings a little different skill set than maybe some of the other guys do. And um, I think it's been good for both. It's good for our team, and it's been really good for Mike as well. Uh, he and I are close, and I appreciate the, the way he goes about doing his doing his business. We'll take a question from Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Greg. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, Brendan White uh, looks like he's making an impact for you. Could you kind of talk about what he has brought to the team, uh, both on and off the field? I think Brennan's doing a tremendous job. Um, from the day he got here, he was a leader on our football team. He works extremely hard. He's extremely focused on, on being the best player that he can be and helping others around him be that. And then I think he's played well on the field the last two weeks. So you know, certainly I had a great relationship with him at Ohio State. At the beginning, I had, it was a lot of tough love. And uh, and then, as as you know, Bill, he, he really came on um, – the latter part of, I guess that would have been 18. And, um, you know, when, when things didn't work out there for him, uh, I certainly was really pleased that he chose to come join us. So uh, he's an he's a integral part of our program. Those are all our questions for today, Coach. Thanks for the time. All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate you.